Well, hello, you bearded bastards, and welcome back once again to Mafala Kill. Chamber Point, a fortress on the sea that is a little bit of a hellhole. Currently, it's the first of granite in the year 1209, towards the beginning of our third year here in this fortress. And recently, I've been feeling a bit more positive, a little bit more positive, for, well, a few reasons. I think we are starting to find a bit of a rhythm here. Might be hard to believe, and I'm not sure I should go believing it myself, but I try to stay positive. For Oranashi, you know. Now remember, quite a few of our citizens have recently petitioned for citizenship, which means that we could finally put them to work and assign them homes, make them productive. And so with that, I figured we should go through and try to clean up uh, the labors that we have everyone doing. It's a bit mixed right now. And if we want things to be efficient, then this is something we have to do. Right now, our population is 78 dwarves, a respectable number. And if we have a look at this list here, you can see all of our dwarves. Nobody's at work right now, really. Everyone's taking a nice little break, listening to some poetry in the Gleeful Fishman. And we've gone through and put an asterisk next to all the citizens that aren't actual citizens yet. Some of the elves, one of the Testries warriors, uh, two of them, actually. And even some of the dwarves that are here. Right now we have 21 non-citizen residents. A pretty fair chunk. And now we're going to go through and assign them tasks, which will be extremely tedious. All right, and that's going to do it right about there. All our new professions. We have some clothiers, some dedicated miners. Ral the necromancer who made that horse bone spike is now a bone carver. And in addition to the bone carver, we also have some wood crafters, glass makers, a couple of potters, and all kinds of other stuff too. We're going to have to start making some things to trade. A lot of things to trade. That's going to really help us in the long run, I think. I tell you, um, our neighbors aren't going to like it. But I think we're going to start cutting down some serious trees. We kind of have to. At least for a little bit, anyways. Maybe we'll settle down in a, in a year or so. We'll see what happens. And so yes, let's get to it, dwarves. Straight to work. We have plenty to do. Now let's see here. Houses are coming along nicely. I'm not too sure how many we're up to at this point, but... Well, we're going to need more, no matter what. 200 at least before I'm comfortable. Might need some other structures too. I'm sure we'll need more guild halls down the road. And you know, we're still gonna need a place to store all these items. This is all the crap the adventurers brought with them when they first arrived here. And there's a lot of it, and it needs to be sorted through. A big job right there. Down in the mines here, we're still struggling to get enough blocks to build houses out of. They go so fast. Oh, right. I forgot. It's just the beginning of spring, so we have an elven caravan here. Pretty cool. Let's see what they got. We don't have too, too much to trade, but remember, we scared off the Dwarven merchants last year, and it seems that they dumped off a bunch of their crap here, so we could just trade a bunch of that garbage. And on top of that, we've also been making some very nice turtle shell helmets. <laughs> They're actually not that nice at all, but keep some of our dwarves busy. And we have turtle shells all over the place, so I figure, what the hell. Okay, let's have a look here. Well, okay, we do have some toys, some instruments, not too useful for us. A saltwater crocodile, eh? I'm gonna pass for now. We will, however, take some cages, and maybe we'll take some clothing, too. Why the hell not? Okay, and that'll do it. We traded away a bunch of those other metal items, but we decided to keep our hands on these pond turtle shell helmets. For now, at least. Oh, and yes, we did decide to get a bunch of animals, too. I don't know why. I don't know what we're doing. It's not anything we need, but here we are. But like, actually, seriously, real talk here, we have to do something about defense. It's been more than two years now, and if a siege came right now, we'd be totally screwed. We have no way to defend ourselves, no walls, no real safe, defensible areas. Well, I mean, we have the panda compound, but still, I'm pretty sure we'd be dead if we had to go in there. So the reason I'm getting those animals is just in the hopes that at some point we can get a breeding pair of like, say, those grizzly bears that we got earlier, and just start breeding them like crazy. I mean, we already have our horn beetles, the grizzly bears too, maybe down the line or something. But anything else we can get in addition to that is also going to help us. Oh, hold up a second. Looks like we have some new migrants here. One, two, three, 19 of them. Wow, that is an awful lot. Um, but yes, all sorted out. No necromancers again. And that brings us up to 94 citizens. Getting up there, almost at 100. Gonna start pulling this place together. Anyways, back to fortress defense. Up over this way here, you can see a wall that we've begun constructing. A stone wall fairly short right now, but it should do the trick, hopefully. We still have a ways to go if we're going to surround ourselves entirely, but it's a start. Better than nothing, <laughs> which is precisely what we have. Oh, looks like we have a new artifact down in the mines. Dusim Rashethel, a miner, has created Remeng Zulash, a diary armor stand. She claims it as a family heirloom. Its name translates to the Cerulean Pains, 
and it's worth 4800 Not expecting a thrilling one. This is a diorite armor stand. All Kraftwerf ship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with round diorite cabochons and decorated with alpaca wool. On the item is an image of marquee cut gems and goat bone. Wow, that's a good one. Very good job. It's actually kind of boring, isn't it? But that's fine. We can find something to do with it, I'm sure. We might end up putting it in the Gleeful Fishman. It'd be nice if people could see it. Actually, it would be nice if we had visitors in there, huh? Yeah, I was expecting a lot more activity, but eh, here we are. <laughs> Actually, what the hell am I saying? We need more activity? We certainly do not. <laughs> in fact, you can see Stackhut over here, uh, currently on his way to beat some criminals, which I think he just did right there. Yeah, just making the rounds real quick. Be <laughs> beating all the recent criminals. <laughs> oh boy. Gotta do what you gotta do. Moving on a bit, you can see some of our other constructions. We're trying to make some more uh, specialized areas now. Like you can see over here to the west, our hospital. Gonna make it fairly sizable too. You can see it's right over the side of this hill. And it's gonna consist of two floors. This one right here, and then another below, which is already completed. Even has beds in place, which is nice. And if you look down to the south, you can actually see a well as well, which is already filling. There is a light aquifer in the area, and so we're just getting the water from that. Extremely handy. Oh, damn it. Just lost another dwarf here. And this one was Cybrek. I know we haven't seen that much of her, but she was another of the founding members. A ranger. A mischievous ranger. That's how the other founders knew her anyways. She wasn't doing too well since Thob died. She was actually right nearby and witnessed him be taken down. That's a damn shame right there. <sighs> Looks like we've lost another. Oh, we'll have to get her properly interred down in the caves, and we'll carve up a nice slab as well. That being said, another of the original founders just petitioned for citizenship, Rimtar, a smith, who also seems to be fairly content around here, which makes him an extremely valuable dwarf these days. Yeah, he's upset at some of the deaths, but really overall, not doing too bad. It's good to see. I've also noticed that he uh, tends to have a bit of pep in his step, much like Fishface does. Yeah, a particularly valuable dwarf, I'd say. Although, he does not care for the ghosts that have been popping up around the place. We've been trying to get a handle on those things, but so many dwarves and panda people and elves have been dying that, well, it's going to be a bit difficult. We're trying our best. Well, anyways, back to our constructions, which we are still very hard at work on. If you have a look back over here, you can see our hospital once more, which is coming along quite well. If we look down below, you can see the well is already filling, and so there's plenty of water in there. Aquifer is extremely handy. I know I've said it already, but that cannot be overstated. And if we look up a floor, well, I was going to put more beds in here, but I decided to actually make it uh, two houses in which we're going to house our medical dwarves, of which we have two currently. I figured that'd be a good idea. We have a lot of people in the fortress and not enough room for them. Up over this way here, you can see two other structures. Up to the north there, I was hoping to make that a, um, maybe another crafting pavilion. I think that'd be a good idea, but... Mm, not too sure. We actually just got a petition to make a temple, so that's what that might end up being. I'm not too sure. Down here just to the south, you can see we have another structure, and this is going to be our kitchen. We have a bunch of cooks in the fortress now, mostly Gorlax, and they need a place to ply their trade. I figured we'd get that out of the way. It should be pretty good. Looking forward to that. Down over here this way, I was hoping to make a nice big place for our fishery workers, right next to the sea. I thought that'd be pretty cool. We could store fish in there prepare them. We've been making kind of a mess with it, honestly. The fisher dwarves are just catching fish and throwing them all over the place. Yeah, we gotta get that straightened out. Oh my. Hold up here a second. Some fairly bad news. Our bookkeeper has been found dead here in the hospital. They were beaten up by a Testries warrior. The one angry Testries warrior we have in the fortress. Well, that's a damn shame right there. Gonna have to get a new bookkeeper, I guess. Oh, well, looks like we have some new migrants. Wonderful. Hopefully when he use a bookkeeper. Come on in. Uh, back to this corpse and the testry who's carrying it. This here is one of our most agreeable testries warriors, Ted Anyamil, one of the founding members of this fortress. Not an official citizen yet, but I'm sure she'll get there in time. Looking forward to see what she becomes in this fortress. She's incredibly tough and might make a good warrior. In fact, I could imagine her giving Stackhut a run for his money in terms of his position. She's quite a tough customer. But anyways, back over here we can see that other testries warrior, the surly one named Jeha. Yeah, you know what? We haven't thrown anybody out of the fortress yet, but I think you're going to be out of here, my friend. No interest in this sort of trouble. And as such, I have a little idea planned. I've ordered some miners to come over here and start constructing a ramp, carving it out of the face of this wall leading down into the caves. You can see right here it leads down, 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 pretty darn far to the bottom of the caves. 
and this is going to be Jeha's new home. We're going to exile him, but not away from the fortress, just out into the caves. I'm mainly doing this because I realized that Jeha's the one that killed Cybrek, one of the founding dwarves. And I think a particularly cruel punishment is in order. If he could survive out here, then good for him. Otherwise, don't have time to care. And so, Jeha, we have to kindly ask you to leave Mafala kill. Oh, actually, I see up. <laughs> Looks like he's in the hospital now. I think Stackhud probably got to him. Still, not punishment enough. As soon as you're able to walk, we want you down to those caverns. You're out of here, my friend. And while we're waiting for that, we have some other stuff to check in on. Back to our structures, actually. And over here, you can see a particularly large one. Moving down a level. And this here is intended to be a warehouse. A place where we can finally store some of those excess items. That'd be very nice, actually. Get things cleaned up a bit. It took a lot of stone to get this done, as you could imagine. And actually, it's going to take a lot more as well. We're going to make it a couple levels tall. We're going to need plenty of storage. Hey, looking over to the east, you can see the dwarven wagons have arrived once more. Very good. Hoping they're not scared away this time. <laughs> that could really screw things up a bit. I can't imagine they'll give us much trouble, though. <laughs> okay, please, let's keep it together. Just had a little argument over here at the old temple. Ended up with one of our hunters dying. Uh, can we please not? Oh, and it looks like we may have had a little accident over this way here. Right next to the trade depot. <laughs> Chaos. A section of the cavern has collapsed. I, I realize it's not part of the cavern. It's just part of the slope here. We were getting rid of some of this terrain. This isn't good at all. It's definitely going to scare him away, right? I guess we'll see. Okay. I'm not sure if it did. Did it scare him away? Maybe not. Maybe that. Maybe that's fine. I think it's fine. Oh, yeah. Things are coming out chamber point. Okay, let's do some trading. Okay, if we trade all of our items... Um, well, it's actually pretty good, considering that most of our items are, well, I mean, trash. We don't really have anything crafted here in the fortress, just a bunch of clothing that has rotted off of our citizens, and some of the garbage that fell out of that wagon that ran away last year. Um, but yeah, we can make it work. Let's see what we can get. Mm, just gonna take an odd assortment of metals, might as well, and some ropes. Couldn't hurt. Oh, you know what? We need some more metal cages, too, for our prison, and so we'll get a few of those. Some drinks, some barrels, a little bit of clothing. Help cut down on nudity in the fortress. Rampant nowadays. And we'll finish off with some cloth, I think. Probably can't get that much more than that anyways. Ugh, they won't even let us take that. Okay, well, here, take some of these metal bars back. And some of these ropes, which we really don't need that badly, I guess. Really now? Okay. So now the merchant's saying, Your childish games have made me tired. Perhaps next time I visit, you'll take this seriously. What the hell with you, then? We don't want your crap. Get out of here. Off with you, merchants. Back to the mountain homes. We have bigger fish to fry here anyways. Bastards. Okay. Hmm. I mean, those were some premium items we were trying to trade. I don't know who you're kidding. <laughs> but. Hmm. What if we made a trap for the wagon? Like when they showed up, we could kind of like upend the wagon and just take everything that's in it. That'd be interesting. But of course, we have bigger problems in the fort currently. Like Jeha, the test trees warrior over here, throwing a tantrum. Although, it looks like he's now heading over to the caves. Wonderful. There we go. There's a good exile. Okay, stay down there a minute. Just gotta get somebody over here to close this gate real quick. Just like that. Good job, fish face. Like that hustle. And yeah, enjoy your new life in the caves, you bastard. Watch your head around the corpse pile, too. I'm sure there's gonna be more to come. And you know what? This might actually be an excellent opportunity to see what's down in the caverns. Yeah, let's have ourselves a little look. Although, okay. It looks like he's refusing to go anywhere. Perfect. In fact, apparently he'd like to attend a meeting, probably with our mayor. Well, that's not going to happen, my friend. Whatever. Sit in place down here and whatever. See ya. Okay, back up to the surface once more and things are advancing a bit. I think we should start focusing on some good news. What do you say? Like up here at the former panda compound. You can see we've kind of turned it into a, a horn beetle pen. We needed some place to put them. We do have quite a few now. Actually, I've lost count. Probably at least a dozen or so, though. Very good news. They'll be helpful in fortress defense. Something we should really start focusing on. And then over here at the Rangers Guild, they can see our grizzly bears, of which we have five now. Yes, the female just gave birth to a litter of three. Very good. We can also war train these things. And I could imagine horn beetles fighting alongside grizzly bears as being a rather fearsome force. We're going to have to hope anyways, because at the time being, that's all we have. <laughs> Looking for good news here, right? Well, we just had another dwarf die. Actually, 
I might count this as good news, believe it or not. This one was kind of a troublemaker, Air Rush. We didn't know him well, but they've been throwing tantrums and getting in fights all over the place, and were actually just killed by Stackhud. Man, that guy does not take much crap, I'll tell you. Look at this giant list of disorderly conducts, vandalisms, and actually we just had this new complaint come in regarding Udil Unomosas, our mayor, the necromancer. Well, rules are rules, sir, and like it or not, you're going to have to face the consequences of your actions. There's just too much disorder around here. We're not letting anybody get away with anything. Oh, there it goes. Okay, beat him. Looks like he uh, has ran over here to our hospital now. He's in a bed, waiting for some attention. Well, I don't know what to tell you, guy. Stop causing trouble. Man, Stackhard really let him have it, too. His neck is torn open, his left hand is mangled, his right hand is mangled, and his upper spine is bruised. Yeah, I really worked him over good. Well, once again, that's what happens. Consequences and such. Rest up, you miserable bastard. Actually, you know what? Let's have a little look at our mayor. We haven't seen that much of him so far. Well, first off, I'll state that he has been, as I've said, a miserable bastard this entire time. Incredibly stressed out, angry, and now he's shaken after suffering a major injury, as well as humiliated after being beaten. That's not going to help things, I don't think. But aside from his current emotions, his mindset overall states that he is unfriendly and disagreeable. He dislikes receiving advice, keeps his own counsel, thinks he's fairly important in the grand scheme of things, is not swayed by emotional appeals, pleased by his own appearance and talents, has little interest in joking around, does not care what others think of him, and really, overall, does not have too many positive attributes. Just kind of miserable. But he's got to have something going for him, right? Maybe just has a silver tongue. Ah, yes. He is a legendary persuader, negotiator, judge of intent, intimidator, conversationalist. This guy is in full control of every conversation he's in, I'd imagine. I can see why he'd be voted mayor. And as for his likes and dislikes, he's a fan of Pericles, Electrum, Fortification Agate, Mm, the color red-purple, spears, which he has mandated to be constructed in the past, something we were unable to accomplish, and, oh my, Udil here likes pandas for their big fluffy heads and bellies. <laughs> Too perfect. Well, I guess that'll explain why I've been trying so hard to keep those panda people happy. Udil appears to have a rather soft spot for them, in a creepy sort of way, almost. <laughs> Hmm. Well, my friend, rest up a bit and try to get a handle on that temper, huh? I can't imagine he's going to last much longer if he keeps pulling stuff like that, hoping he learned a lesson here. You may try to rule this place, but if you break the laws, then you're going to be in trouble. And Stackhud's going to see to it. And speaking of Stackhud, <laughs> this is one busy dwarf, I'll tell you, as we've said. But man, check out this list here. This is crazy, but the guy has already killed 12 people. One, two, three, four, five panda people, two of the black bear people, three elves, and two dwarves. <laughs> hmm. If everyone could just behave themselves for a little bit, maybe we could uh, avoid this sort of stuff. Kind of monstrous when you get down to it. But it's not like there's a good choice. And speaking of criminals, how about we check in on our little exile here down in the caves? Just to see how he's... Oh my. This is something. It looks like Jeha was killed. Violently killed. Well, that's not good at all. They have blood all over the place, pools of blood, splatters of blood. And on the ground next to him, we can see, well, it's a leg and his head. Both were torn away. What happened down here? You have to wonder if there's something out there somewhere. We haven't seen much activity down in the caves yet, but... As every dwarf knows, that doesn't mean there's nothing down there. The caves are full of life and death. Be aware, dwarves. Whoa, what's this here? Dwarves, out to the beach, immediately. We've sighted something out there in the water. You see that? It's huge. This here is a sperm whale. An enormous creature. We haven't seen much of anything out in the ocean, honestly. And so this is the first... Wow, an impressive creature. The thing is huge. If we can manage to catch one of these, we can feed our entire fortress for a good long time. Plus, I mean, the bragging rights alone would be astounding. Oh, we really can't focus on catching something like this right now, though. Too many other things to worry about. But, oof, yeah, we're going to have to make an effort. Definitely. I'm not sure how we can manage it, but well, we're going to have to. Oh, man, that would be so cool. One day, just wait and see. We're going to catch ourselves a sperm whale, and then our fortress will truly go down in legend. 
but for now that's neither here or there. Our current task is to prevent ourselves from turning inside out. Have to keep that in sharp focus. And you know what, I will say that, well, as I've said before, I feel the place is starting to settle down a little bit, which is really nice to see, finally. There are still tantrums, I mean, regular tantrums even in some circumstances, but compared to the early days, it's nothing. We can handle this. Right now our population is around 96. I'm still pretty high, not quite 100 yet. We still do lose citizens from time to time, as I'm sure you're well aware. And you know, I'm not too sure how many houses we have right now, but it's gotta be close to that. We still do keep pumping them out too, as well as the fact we've been finding other nooks to put our people in. Like, well, if you look over here, in the Gleeful Fishman, and upwards, we do have this tower here, which has eight levels. And so I figured, what the hell? Why not put some bedrooms in there? Gets the job done, right? I imagine the top one's pretty drafty, but well, here's hoping it works out. And then back over here at the Gorlax kitchen, which you can see is now finished. Having a look downward, you can see the six bedrooms underneath. And these are going to be for the Gorlax. They are underground people anyways. We know it's not quite the same, but it's got to be better than what we have. Now having a look over here, the elves have arrived once more. Time flies, I'll tell you. Towards the beginning of our fourth year now. Pretty crazy. Well, not too sure what we have to trade. I know we at least have some turtle shell helmets laying around. Oh, and right, we've actually been making a whole load of turtle shell crafts as well. I forgot about that. Well, fantastic. We'll trade some of those. Hey now, here's some good news. Over here in the Gleeful Fishman, Laura Rizenenshell, the hunter, has given birth to a boy. The first baby born here in Chamber Point. I'm gonna be watching this one with great interest. It's always interesting to follow the story of the first baby born in a fortress, I think. This child's entire existence is Chamber Point. It'll be all they know. We'll have to see how it affects them as they go on. Hopefully not too negatively. I suppose time will tell. Yeah, speaking of which, um, I guess we just had a dwarf get punched to death by a stack cut over here in our tavern. They were a criminal, but <laughs> still, the death penalty might be a bit much. We do have a prison, just gonna throw that out there. Not too sure what's up. Avert your eyes, little baby. <laughs> you, you don't want to see this. Oh man, this fort is a mess sometimes, but we're getting there. Anyways, back over here with the elves, time to do some trading, I think. Now then, let's see what we can get. Well, they brought a giant jaguar and a giant anaconda. Yeah, what the hell? Completely unnecessary, but again, just kind of want them. If nothing else, they're fun to look at. Got some clothing here. We could definitely use some of that, and that's gonna about do it. We'll trade some turtle shell helms for your trouble. Oh, and the crafts too, of course. Yeah, there we go. Great doing business with you. Remember, we really have to keep these guys happy. We don't want to start a war with our neighbors, especially not while we're on constant guard for that beardless baron and his forces. That would give us some real trouble right there. We can barely handle ourselves as it is. Well, we have a couple of migrants up here. And a bit disturbingly, it says we have migrants despite the danger, which I think means we're starting to get kind of a reputation around here. Not the best, but also... Not much you can do about it. Anyways, now that's out of the way, we can show off some more of our progress here. Like over here in the east, we started the other side of our wall. It's only just a tiny little bit right here, but we're going to make it pretty wide and taller than it has to be as well. Better safe than sorry. And you can also see here that we've started digging a moat too. Going to be filled with ocean water. And on that same note, if you have a look up here to the north, you can see that first section of wall that we showed off which has come along quite a bit. The moat there is dug. You can see there is a piece of land still in place to keep that ocean water out. You can see the wall here, two Z levels tall, and it goes up this ramp and continues over to the east. Quite a ways too. I'm actually pretty surprised at how fast it's coming along. Just hoping we can get a little farther on it before we run into some actual trouble. At this point, it's not gonna do us any good, but soon enough. Then we also have some more mundane things to show off. Like I actually didn't finish showing off the Gorlak kitchen over this way. You can see the kitchens and the stills on the first level. Down below there's the bedrooms and a basement. Food storage. But then up above there's another food storage level. I figured that'd be nice. Gotta have that storage. We still have crap all over the place. And then yes, north from that we have another building. That one that we were kind of on the fence about. We ended up turning it into a temple. Gets the job done. It's a very nice temple. Got some microcline pillars out front. Pretty stately. Yeah, it came out real nice. The dwarves appreciate it. Over here to the east of the Gleeful Fishman, we have our warehouse once again. The second level's coming along, almost completed. Gonna be putting furniture in here. The mayor's tower down in the south is done. It didn't end up being too, too tall. Just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven levels. It has a roof up top. It's a pretty squat tower, but it's nicely appointed. Has an attic area, a bedroom, a dining room, and an office, of course. Yeah, he seems to like it. And I almost forgot our fishery right over this way here. Nothing too stunning to look at really, but gets the job done. 
keeps the mess down. And right next to it we have another structure, a very large structure and a growing structure as well. Now what we have here is what we're hoping will become one day a, a bit of a wind farm. We have a pair of long structures, one is just beginning over to the east, and they're going to be filled with gear assemblies, which are going to be attached to windmills, which are going to be poking through the roof up top. Now yes, we do have quite a ways to go with this, and you may be wondering what we're going to do with it, but I've got some plans that may be related to some sperm whales. And if these plans have any chance of coming to fruition, we're going to need lots of power. So we're just thinking about things down the line a bit. It's nothing too important, really. But who says we can't have a little fun? Our citizens here have been through a whole heck of a lot. And on that note, I think that's just going to about do it. Things in the fortress are increasingly stable, and we've really put the work in trying to get some new and imperative structures in place. Mostly housing, but some other important ones as well. And we're going to be continuing that for quite some time. It's really taken quite a bit to get some of those buildings built. Just going to have to hope everything's ready by the time the Baron's forces arrive. Because if they're not, then, well, I'm not too sure what we'll do. But that's a worry for another day. We've lived under his thumb for so long that it's actually kind of nice out here, I'd say. A nice little getaway here on the coast of the Ocean of Lace. Mafalakil, Chamber Point, our home. <laughs> Well, hello, you bearded bastards, and welcome to the end of the episode where we'll be talking about some behind the scenes things. And let's see, what do we have here? First off, actually, now that I'm thinking of it, panda people, we know them, we're annoyed by them. They seem to be a big pain in the ass, but I feel there's something I have to point out. Um, I know I've complained about them not eating in the past, and boy, have I gotten a lot of feedback about the fact that they can only eat bamboo. But I'm going to tell you what, that is just not the case. It's not. Several times now I've scoured the forests around Chamber Point and there is not one piece of bamboo anywhere. The entire area is a single biome and there's no bamboo. That in mind, we've been here for four years now. And because there's no bamboo and none of our panda people have starved to death yet, I can tell you they're not eating bamboo. But they are eating something. That's the thing. Although I will mention that at one point I saw a hungry panda and I was following him just to see if they did eventually eat something. And at one point I noticed a dwarf pass them by and the panda stopped being hungry. And then when I examined their mind it said that they received food recently. So while I'm still not 100% certain I think maybe the panda was fed by a dwarf? It's a pretty peculiar thing. But once again something I can confirm is the fact that they are not eating bamboo. Ah the mysteries of dwarf fortress. Other things to mention. Well, I figured I'd mention what a hassle it is to manage this fortress behind the scenes. It is entertaining, but there's a lot to do. And the main thing that has to be done is uh, building all of the buildings. Unlike in a normal dwarven fortress where you just have to dig through the earth, with this one here you have to construct every single segment of wall, and roof, and floor for that matter. And so yeah, it, it takes a bit of doing. But I'd say it's pretty rewarding. I actually like the feel of this fortress a whole lot so far, and I'm pretty curious to see how it advances in the future. I think it'd be pretty cool to see an entire above ground surface dwarven city. All kinds of housing and structures out there. Yeah, that should be pretty neat. Neater still is going to be our defenses, I think. We do have that wall going up, but I'm curious to see what will happen. Uh, well, you know, what? I'm going to be frank. I'm doing this whole fortress here as sort of a challenge thing. And so I'm playing extremely foolishly just kind of tempting fate. But, you know, really so far it's worked out pretty well. But that could certainly change. In fairly short order too. We'll have to see if that pans out though. Hoping for the best, slash worst. And with that my bearded bastards, I do truly hope you enjoyed yourselves today. And I certainly hope to see you next time here in Mafala Kill, Chamber Point. And until then, you bearded, bearded, Bastards. <laughs>